Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the concept of acid rain and the role of sulphur and nitrogen oxides in the formation of acid rain. As ever, let's begin with an overview. Okay, so we're going to start off by thinking about the formation of these sulphur and nitrogen oxides. So where do they come from and how can we describe the chemistry of this process? And then we're going to start to think about how it links with this concept of acid rain. So how we go from the oxide in the atmosphere to, this, to what acid rain is. We're going to spend a little bit of time defining um, this concept of acid rain and outlining some of its effects. Okay, so let's begin by thinking about how sulphur oxides are formed. So the two main processes that we are concerning ourselves with are the burning of fossil fuels, like you could see here with, with I say, like in things like coal in particular, um, which contains a, better, a certain amount of natural sulphur, and then also the smelting um, of sulphide ores for particular, for extracting metals like copper and zinc from their natural sulphur um, ores or minerals that we would dig out of the ground. Okay, so um, typically, so we're saying sulphur in, in compounds like you might find in coal, when we burn it in the presence of oxygen in the air, we get this production of sulphur dioxide, SO2. SO2 is also formed in that, that smelting of the ores by say like zinc, burning again in the presence of oxygen, we get solid zinc oxide, which gets us closer to the zinc metal that we would need, but also produces sulphur dioxide gas all of which is released into the atmosphere. Now looking at nitrogen oxides, the two main kind of processes, which we, the, the chemistry of this is fairly similar. We're thinking about car exhausts, um, and then we're also thinking about electricity generation. So whether it's coal fired uh, power stations or, or anything that operates at a very high temperature, because um, nitrogen, ox nitrogen oxides, typically nitrogen dioxide forms when uh, we have nitrogen and oxygen combining together at high temperatures. Now, nitrogen and oxygen, as you are hopefully well aware, are the major components of the air that we breathe. Okay, so anywhere that you have nitrogen and oxygen together in high temperature situations, um, we get this process happening. Okay, so inside the, the engine of a car, um, inside, you know, generators, inside a, a power station, um, we get the formation of this compound called nitric oxide, NO, which then can subsequently react with oxygen in the air to form nitrogen dioxide, which is the main one that, that causes the negative effects. But the reality is that we do get a mixture of these two substances whenever these processes are happening. So sometimes we refer to nitrogen oxides as a mixture of NOx to reflect that X could be one or two in this process. Okay, so now let's think about how sulfur oxides um, relate to acid rain, and then we'll do nitrogen after that. Okay, so firstly what happens is that we form this compound in, in the air um, called sulfurous acid, H2SO3. So the sulfur dioxide gas interacts with the water in the water vapour in the clouds to form sulfurous acid. What happens then is that this sulfurous acid reacts further with oxygen in the presence of a catalyst to form sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which dissolves easily in the rain or in these droplets of water inside the clouds. And then when that cloud gets big enough, heavy enough for it to rain, that sulfuric acid comes back down to earth again. Okay, we see a similar sort of problem with nitrogen oxides. We get the formation of this first compound called nitrous acid, HNO2. Okay, so where the nitrogen dioxide gas interacts with water, the water vapour, we get a mixture of nitrous and nitric acid forming. And then what happens, any nitrous acid that's, that's produced in this process then will further react with oxygen in the presence of a catalyst to form nitric acid, in, uh, which dissolves very easily in the water, in the, in the water vapour, to and then comes back down through rain once more. So both of these processes are, are very similar. Okay, so we're getting an, a reaction with the water, we're getting a conversion in the presence of oxygen, and we're getting a, a, a water-soluble acid that comes down in rain. Okay, so how do we define acid rain more generally? Okay, so the definition that we would tend to use is that rain that has a higher hydrogen ion concentration than normal. So normal, uh, normal rain has a hydrogen ion concentration of around about uh, 10 to the minus 6 uh, moles per litre. Like, like, so that is in pH terms, which we'll go into in a future video. It's slightly more acidic than, than a neutral substance because there's carbon dioxide in the air. But... Um, we're thinking a hydrogen ion concentration greater than about 10 to the minus 5. So it's about 10 to 100 to 1,000 times greater than in your typical rain. Okay, so it's still a very low concentration. So this would be around about pH 5, maybe pH 4 if we're going beyond that. Um, but that is more acidic than the environment is typically used to. So that starts to have some negative environmental effects. Okay, so some of the, the ones that we would encounter are uh, 
we get increasing acidity of lakes which can dramatically impact the habitat of aquatic um, you know, marine organisms. It can make it very difficult for fish to survive. If the acidity increases, um, like continues to increase, then yet yeah, the, then all the organisms in that water will die. Um, we also get damage to pine forests. This is a forest outside um, a city in Poland that has been affected by acid rain. So you can see it strips the vegetation from, um, from those sorts of forests. Um, it, it looks kind of like a wasteland. And then we also see damage to um, to my marble and <coughs> limestone, which both contain calcium carbonate. So buildings that might have you know marble kind of surfaces, decorations like statues. You can see in this bottom example, in a case of 50 years, that it's almost the, the place has almost been completely worn away. And then when we've got area around a mine, we also see significant damage to the vegetation. So this is something that we see in happens in Australia. Um, we don't tend to have as much of a problem with acid rain because we don't we're not quite as industrialized. Um, Europe certainly has had, has a big problem with it, and North America does um, in certain areas with lots of manufacturing. Um, but we see it because of the production of sulfur dioxide around in in that mining process um, that that tends to be where it's concentrated for us. Okay, so we've talked about um, how the the sulfur and nitrogen oxides are formed, how they relate to acid rain, and then some of the effects of acid rain. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.